Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over a problem involving one dimensional kinematics for free fall. And in this video, we're going to calculate the final velocity of the object at the bottom of its fall, so to speak. Okay, and this is the problem that we're going to use. We have Sally is standing at the edge of a cliff that overlooks a lake. She picks up a rock and drops it straight down in the lake. If the rock takes 2.45 seconds to reach the lake or to reach the water, what is the final velocity of the rock just before it hits the water? Now, for these free fall problems, I like to draw just a simple diagram. So here is basically my cliff that she's Sally standing on. And I put the rock, just draw a little object, put the rock, that's the rock right there. And it's going to fall through this distance. And the distance... We don't know, but we know that the cliff is 2.45 seconds tall. So I like to write that down so I have that picture in my mind. And you don't really have to do this all the time, but I like to just make sure you think about this. We have our X, Y coordinate system, and the ball is falling down. <clears throat> it's moving down, and therefore the change in position is going to be negative, and also because it's falling in the negative direction, our answer has to have a negative sign in front of it. We want to make sure we keep our sign straight in this problem so we get a negative answer because we're going to have negative velocity. Okay, so that's kind of how we set it up. Now the next thing I like to do is I like to write down all five of the variables that are in the kinematic equations. They include the initial velocity, the final velocity, the change in position, the acceleration, and the time. Now I'm going to fill in what I know and what I don't know, what I'm looking for. And you can see in the problem, they only tell us one thing. They tell us explicitly that the rock is going to, takes 2.45 seconds to reach the water. So I'm going to put down the time is 2.45 seconds. It doesn't say this explicitly, but since Sally is standing there holding the rock, she's going to drop it. It has an initial velocity of 0 meters per second. And also we know the acceleration is 9.81 meters per second for free fall. That is the acceleration due to gravity. It's a constant for free fall. And because the ball is falling down and it's accelerating in the negative direction, we put a negative sign in front of our acceleration. So it's negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Like I said, it's important to keep the negative and the positive sign straight. Now we are trying to find the final velocity. We're not given the change in position, so therefore I put a little dash there. We're not going to use that. Okay, so we drew a diagram. We wrote down our knowns and our unknowns, what we've been given. Now I'm going to go to the next slide and bring that with us. We'll get out our kinematic equations. And we're going to figure out which equation we're going to use. Now, we're trying to find the final velocity. So we're going to have to pick an equation that has the final velocity in it, and hopefully we'll find the equation that also has the other three variables. You will notice once again that you're given three variables. You're asked to find a fourth. Each of these equations has four variables in it. Therefore, if you're looking for one and you know the other three, then you can use that equation. Now, you'll notice right away that this equation does not have the final velocity. We're looking for the final velocity. So we know we're not going to use that equation. Now, we have to go through each of the others because all the other equations have the final velocity in it. So let's just start at the top here. We're looking for the final velocity. This equation has the final velocity. We have to know the other three variables that are in the equation. Do we know the time? Yes, we know the time. Do we know the initial velocity? Yes, but we don't know the change in position, so therefore we cannot use this equation. The next equation, does it have the final velocity in it? Yes, we're looking for the final velocity. We have to know the other three variables, the initial velocity we know, the acceleration we know, and the time we know, and therefore we can use this equation right up here. This equation down here again has a change in position, so we can't use the change in position. So this is the equation we're going to use. We're going to go to the next slide, take that equation with us, and all our information and our diagram, and now we can simply plug the values in because we're solving for the final velocity. This equation is already solved for the final velocity. Now, another thing you should notice about this equation and this problem is the initial velocity is zero. Generally, for free fall, you're holding something and you're dropping it. You're not throwing it down. That can, that can be the case, but in this case, you're just dropping it. So the initial velocity is zero, and therefore, 
this equation simplifies so that the final velocity is equal to the acceleration times the time. Again, this is a good equation to keep in mind because generally, as I said, when you're dropping something, the initial velocity is zero and the final velocity is just the acceleration times the time. So we can plug our values in. The final velocity is equal to minus 9.81 meters per second squared, again, a minus sign, times the time. And we get that the final velocity is minus 24.03 meters per second. Now, again, the object is falling down. Therefore, the velocity has to be negative. And it's good to keep your negatives and your positives straight. OK, so that's the answer. If an object for free fall takes 2.45 seconds to fall through the distance it's falling or the change in position, then it's going to have a final velocity of 24 0.03 meters per second, and it's falling in the negative direction. So therefore, we have a negative sign in front of our velocity. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, you can do all of the three things, the following three things. You can give me a thumbs up for this video. You can leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And then you can subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Thank you very much. We will see you in the next video.